Nigeria's population, as of today, is estimated to be over 211 million, uh, based on the World Metal, uh, of course, report from the United Nations. And this figure represents 2.64% of the world population. But why are census figures always controversial? Why does population always create problems in all countries of the world? This will center on our discussion today as we talk about population dynamics in conflict resolution, uh, public relations approach to this. What should be the role of public relations in finding a lasting solution to population figures in Nigeria? What should be the dynamics? Where do we go from here? How do we use public relations as a tool to solve population figures in Nigeria? My guests are here with me. I have experts who will be taking costly looks at our topic on your image today. Once again, you are welcome. I have in the studios former director of the National Population Commission, MPC, Mr. Larry and Nifo Wushi. You're welcome to your image, sir. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. And another regular phase on this show is a practitioner of public relations, a veteran, uh, of course, former general manager corporate communications of NIPOST. Mr. Tai Olani, you are welcome to your image once again. Thank you very much. Um, my pleasant courtesies to the viewers at home. Thank you very much. To start with, uh, let, let me start from um, a population expert, a census expert, and the man that has seen it all when it comes to population uh, issue in Nigeria. Uh, Mr. Anifoshi, let me start with, for the sake of our people who are watching us, who may want to learn one or two things from you. How do we define population? Um, <clears throat> straightforward. Population is a distinct group of individuals, whether that group comprises of a nation or a group of people with a common characteristics. Mm. That is the simplest definition of, of population. Mm. So for, for, for Nigeria, when we talk about the population of the people, mm. this is straight and uh, considering the population, the people who are within the country called Nigeria. Mm. And that is why and that is why for census taking, mm. which is basically for developmental planning, mm. the issue is not about indigenous of Nigeria or nationals of Nigeria, but people who are resident in Nigeria during that census yes, period. Yes. Mm. Meaning that even non Nigerians can be part of the exercise. Oh sure. If they are here. Yes. During the sure. exercise. You you will see like I mentioned earlier, I said Census taking is for developmental planning, mm, mm. To, for government to be able to plan for the people who are living within the country called Nigeria. Mm. And that is why focus is not on only Nigerians, mm. but everybody mm. that, re, that resides within the country for that period of time. Mm. All right, uh, let, let me add one more question. Now, if you look at uh, the history of census exercises in Nigeria over the years, it has always been very, very controversial. Why do we have controversial census exercise in Nigeria? Even the last one that we had in, in, in 2006. 2006, yes. Uh, census taken in Nigeria has been controversial because we have politicized it. Wow. We have taken it beyond issue of the mental planning mm. into politics. We play politics with it. We use it to share the national cake. Mm. We equally use it to share <coughs> political seats. Mm. And that is why everybody wants to have an advantage. Mm. And because of that, that is why for every time we talk about census taken in Nigeria, it goes beyond what the technocrats do with what they come back from the field with. Mm. I mean, they go out to the field, they conduct the census exercise, they take their figures, but because we play politics with it, mm. we, we turn things upside down. Mm. Mm. If we are not using this to share the national cake, if we are not using it to allocate political seats, mm. maybe it would not have been this way. Mm. Jokularly, I could have said, if they now say, well, your figure will determine the tax you pay, <laughs> maybe it will be the other way around. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Lamy, yep. you said politicization of census exercise in Nigeria. I, I think it, it, when it was uh, defining it, talking about planning, proper planning for the country, I, I, it seems we have jettisoned this particular primary objective of census exercise and uh, politics. Thank you very much. 
it may have to be like that because when at times you are looking at what uh, could be responsible for wanting to appropriate one thing or the other, the resources that obtain in a particular geographic space, mm. the number of people that, maybe the number of people that are occupying that geographic space, you have to realize that uh, there will always be demand because of the growth in population. And the growth in population in relation to geographic space, the natural resources in there, maybe occasionally the mortality mm. that also goes in a particular environment and the migration. For example, people from rural to urban, people from other places flowing in into other places because of what they regard as uh, the strife for economic uh, development, economic buoyancy of both the individual and these various categories of people mm. based on the demographic pattern. Is it that of gender? Is it that of age? Is it that of social status? Mm. Is it that of educational background? and so on and so forth. On the basis of this, there will always be room mm. for strife, for getting certain things for certain set of people, as we today have in Nigeria, you talk of the North and South. Mm. At times, you talk of uh, uh, the caliber of people that are doing certain things or the other, mm. which may be are uh, not acceptable to the generality mm. of the people so geopolitics play a mm. very great role mm. in what can be regarded mm. as a dynamics in population mm. and you see that in the past the socio-cultural environment wherein you find yourself you find that that during the time that there are people were agri based mm. we normally want uh, as many number of children as possible but today because <laughs> of uh, the the realities of today as yoruba will say mm. bere, bere. Mm. but you find that that in various geographical environments the consideration for what number of people should occupy certain positions and places will always bring about whatever you can regard as a conflict of interest and this is where occasionally mm. Mm. we have clashes mm. and uh, some of the problems and crisis that uh, we uh, have. Uh, all right, thank you very much. Mr. Anubi, let, let me come back to you. Yes. You mentioned population dynamics. As somebody who has worked with National Population Commission before, and from your past experience, what are those identifiable dynamics that we should look at in population? Yes, thank you very much. When we talk of population dynamics, we talk basically of why population change in size mm. and structure over time. Mm. Um, basically, when we look at the Nigerian situation, mm. we, he has mentioned something about the North and the South. Mm. We look at the characteristics okay. of the population of these two geopolitical zones. Now, what has, always, what has always given rise to misconceptions, especially for us in the South, mm. is that people think the North is vast in land space, mm. and as such, there aren't people there. Mm. That people are, the, the, the Southerners look at population in terms of density. Mm. Let me break it down. Okay. If you, in this studio now, mm. if we have like 100 people seated here. Okay. Anybody that opens the door will say the place is jam-packed, hmm. that you can hardly find a place to put your leg in. Take the same number of people, hmm. put them in a stadium, <laughs> and you say there is nobody there. Meanwhile, statistically, it is the same number of people. Hmm. 100 here in the studio hmm. where you have yeah, less space hmm. and everywhere is tight compared to where you take them and put them in the stadium. A bigger and place. A bigger place. That is the way we view it. Also, when you look at the way people view 
culturally and religiously too, which also affects population up north compared to what we have done south. Mm. Education, Western education, equally has a role to play in mm. this. Mm. Here in Abeokuta, if you see an illiterate trader or taxi driver or whatever, he will say he's suffering because mm. he's not educated. And as such, he will not want to procreate beyond what he can maintain. <laughs> I have just three kids. And I'm sure there are so many of us like that with, with just three kids because you look at your economic resources sure. and what you can, <laughs> the kind of life you want to give your mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. But that is not the way some of our compatriots up not view it. They see it as God's blessing mm -hmm. and that God will always take care of, of, them. of them when they come. <laughs> that, that in itself is another factor that breeds more and more mm -hmm. children for them. Now, when we look at all this, the other side is for the female population. Okay. I have seen a northern woman who at 45 hmm. was a grandmother. Wow, at 45? At 45. Educated northern woman at 45 was a grandmother. Down south here, hmm. you will see a lady of 25 going 30 who does not even have a regular boyfriend, shopless <laughs> of having a child. Shopless hmm. of having a child. Meanwhile, if you are 30, hmm. as a lady up north, chances are that you even find it difficult getting hmm. a man. Hmm. That is one. Two, there are many men of our social standing. When I say our social standing, hmm. somebody like me, I have a wife and just three kids. Mm -hmm. Not many of my social status up north mm -hmm. will have that limited number. It's not just about the religion, it has mm -hmm. to do with the culture and the social status too. And when you look at this, you see that when you have two, three wives, mm -hmm. they, they, they are women equally compete. If, mm -hmm. if the first wife has three kids, mm -hmm. by the time the second wife comes in, mm -hmm. she wants to meet up with a mate that she met at home with three kids. <laughs> uh, one of uh, the governors in the Northwest, when we had the last census, had three wives and 12 kids. Wow. That's an educated person. And a the, governor for that matter? He wasn't a governor then. Okay, then, okay. Just oppose that with an illiterate farmer hmm. or somebody who is not educated, who feels my religion allows me to breed as many as I can mm. cater for. My culture equally allows it. So when we talk of these characteristics of the population between the North and South, mm. these are some of the variables that mm. people don't mm. think about. Mm. 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 Even, down, even, even here in the state, states, we talk about Lagos being highly populated. It is really. Mm. But we fail to realize that many of the people we see in Lagos mm. reside in the Ogun State. Ojudu mm. Abiodo, the Long Bridge, Baga, these are all parts of Ogun State. And uh, from Abeokuta to Lagos. Uh, yes, uh, my brother. Even, to even, bridge and, uh, yes, even somebody who leaves Abeokuta to mm. go to Songo yes. will say he's going to Lagos. Lagos. And when you get to Songo or Ifo hmm. and you see yellow buses, if you feel you are in Lagos. Lagos. <laughs> when you talk about Agbara, hmm. you think Agbara is in Lagos. Meanwhile, it is part of Ogun State. Also, the daytime population that you see in Lagos is not the same with the population you see at night. Hmm. I have friends who work in Lagos, but live in Abeokuta. And this is easy, I mean, this is a lot easier for them to do now, especially with the train services that is mm -hmm. running now. Mm -hmm. and, and when you see them during the day, on the island, mm -hmm. everywhere is jam-packed. Do not forget that in Nigeria, when we have the census, when we have to take the census, <coughs> movement is restricted. Mm -hmm. And when movement is restricted, these people are enumerated during the census where they live, where they reside. 
And most times, they are out of... Most times, they are out of these densely populated areas. You see them during the day. So, that, that, these are some of the things that give rise to misconception about the population of a particular area as against what is the true reality of the figures of such areas when you <coughs> to take the sense of the sea. All right, thank you very much, yeah. uh, Mr. Nipoji. Let me go back to Mr. Lali. Let's look at the population uh, role in, uh, in, in conflict resolution when it comes to population issue. Well, first and foremost, uh, humans are noted for being both occupationally and geographically mobile. And especially when it has been established that certain individuals are citizens of a country. So there is always room for free flow of human beings to different places at one point in time or the other. And it is on the basis of that that a number of people can feel free to inhabit a particular geographic space while a number of people are regarded slowly as uh, non indigenous of such places. And when such taxonomy comes as human phylums in certain degrees, the tendency is that there will be clashes. In Lagos, you talk of Omonile, and I think that goes for a number of places in Yoruba land that these are Omonile. Hmm. Now, you discover that because of the so-called government empowerment, especially as a result of the democratic process in Nigeria, whereby the lonely place people, the so-called masses, are said to be empowered, but they are empowered in certain ways mm -hmm. that at the end of the day may not be, I mean, may be slightly anti-developmental to human mind and mentality as well as human behavior. Look at, we can say that the politicians introduce this high use of uh, machines, um, machines Cycles. and uh, motorcycles and keke napep or keke marwa mm. today, which as at that time was regarded as means of empowerment. Mm. But see the problems it has created for us in Nigeria today. Almost everywhere, the level of insecurity that is associated to various areas are born out of the misuse and misapplication of this so-called means of empowerment. Mm. And as a result of that, they are creating clashes in myriad of ways, which, if we are not very mindful of, may create skirmishes of war, and if not war. Mm. Because you will see there was a time that, uh, in Lagos State in particular, uh, some of these uh, motorcyclists were being, I mean, they are very, I mean, the cycles were being impounded. And there was an impression from the other side of the divide that you are trying to uh, deal with our people. You know what that means? And as a result of that, if care is not taken, then there will be difficulty. <coughs> but from public relations perspective, mm. in order to uh, mitigate some of these <coughs> crises, we have to, in planning, we plan for the people and with the for people. The people. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is where, if truly we really want to retard mm -hmm. this uh, spurious and vicious and virulent nature of a crisis that are being created today, we have to know the people. Mm -hmm. What is the population? Mm -hmm. What categories of people are regarded the elderly ones, which one are youths, which one belong to the uh, children age bracket. Why do we need this? For economic development, mm. planning in such a way that we will be planning the right thing
for the right set of people against thinking that uh, yes let's have some uh, elephant projects which some people will regard as oh the state is growing mm -hmm. there are sophistications everywhere mm -hmm. but the real people mm -hmm. that actually need certain categories of things are not the ones that are getting it look at the urban rural uh, mm -hmm. configuration mm -hmm. of our environment today the rural areas where farming used to take place very, very much, you find because of the crisis today, especially now that others and uh, farmers are in conflict, it becomes very difficult for us to be able to ensure that that anchor, that preference, that premium earlier placed on agricultural development is being disrupted one way or the other. So these are aspects that public relations will make us understand. We research into the population, we research into their geographic space, we research into their rate of growth, and we research into the way and manner they move in order that we can make best of that situation. You're still watching your image from this station, and we're talking about population dynamics in uh, conflict resolution. The role of public relations. Um, before we round off for today, uh, l let me quickly ask this question. You mentioned, I, I asked uh, how census has been, you know, very controversial over the time, yeah. and you talk about politics. Yeah. Uh, is it why that we have had a delay in, in having another census in Nigeria? Because, you know, the government was planned after 2006 uh, population exercise, the government was also planning to have one in 2016 or 17, but uh, ideally, nothing has been heard about that. Yes, <clears throat> ideally, we should have another census. We ought to have had another census by 2016, 2016. 10 okay. years after. Mm. But we are behind time now, we are behind schedule. This is not the fault of National Population Commission. Now, whose fault? It is government mm. that will, it is government that will decide when. The role of the National Population Commission is to make preparation mm. to say this is when we are going to have this next census. But it is the position of government to say we are going to have this census at this period of time. And it is the role of Mr. President to make a proclamation. The Commander in Chief himself. Yes, to make okay. a proclamation that mm. we will have a census this year or next year as the case may be. The first thing we need to do in the National Population Commission in preparatory to a census taking is what we call the demarcation exercise, okay. which is ongoing nationwide. Now? Yes. Okay. It is ongoing nationwide. Presently in Ogo State, they are working in Obafemi Owode local government okay. and updating what they are done in Abekuta South local government. Okay. This is ongoing across the Federation. The demarcation exercise is when we subdivide a local government into subunits okay. of what we call enumeration areas, and these are the units of operation for census taking. Right, before we wonder finally for this week, um, uh, Mr. Olali, your, your takeaway from this edition of the program. Yes, we should also commitment to our national development. We mm. should be patriotic. We should be educated and when being educated let us for the first time please please anchor on integrity of those that are in there patriotism is also very germane to national growth and this can happen when we have a good population that is devoid of conflict and violence so that we can have a stable uh, country that we call our whole nigeria all this is how far we can go on this week's edition of your image. Let me thank the former director of National Population Commission, Mr. Larry Anifoji. Thank you so much. Uh, we will continue next week. And you, do you, you promise to be here? Well, I'll give them what <laughs> thank, thank, thank you very much. much. All right. And uh, I want to thank Mr. Tai Olani, former general manager of corporate communication of NIPOS. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Hope to see you next week. God will. Definitely by the grace of God. All right. Until we meet next week, God willing, I'll continue to say God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs>